Oops, that should be game settings with the double underscore. And we should also rename our player because if you notice in our game settings, it's looking for a game object called PC. So we instantiate our player up here. Let's just quickly rename it to PC. Or in the case that you named it something else, you know, whatever you called it. Another thing we could do is take all these strings and add them to our game settings. This is the file that's going to hold basically all the global settings for our game. But we'll start filling this out as we go along. Okay, so we have our game settings, we have our PC. Uh, we don't have a way to call this yet, so let's add that next after this line here. Make a call to load character. Let's see if there's any errors. Uh, nothing, just a script that we're not using yet. We'll create it. There we go. And our game setting clone. We didn't rename that. We can just make another variable here. Game object. Uh, let's call this GS1 is equal to that, and we'll change this. And we didn't type cast. And there we go, game settings. So we'll stop that, we'll come back in here. Now we're making a call to the load character data in the game settings script. And this is where all the magic is gonna happen for loading up our character data into the proper areas. Now it's almost the exact same as when we save character data, except instead of setting a, an int or a string, we're gonna get the int or string. So I'm actually going to copy this whole block. Well, let's copy it line by line or section by section. Might be a little easier to understand that way. So first off, we're going to create a game object called PC. And it's going to look for a game object named PC in our game hierarchy. So right there, that's our character. And as you see, it has a player character script attached. And then we're going to get the the player class that's attached to it. Now we're obviously not going to want to call delete all. And player pref dot set string player name. Well, instead of setting the name, now we want to get the name. So it's going to be player prefs dot get string. And then in here you have two possibilities. You can set the string you want to get or set the string with a default value in case it doesn't exist. We're going to go with the second one for now. So the string we want, which refers to its key, is the exact same as the line above it, player name. Now we're going to set a default value. I'm just going to call mine name me. So if it ever comes to the loading character data function and it starts going through and it can't find a name for the key player name, it's automatically going to sign one called name me. So we can delete that. Now this is going to return a string. So we want to be able to get what's returned and assign it to our actual character. So we can take this reference up here for our PC class and just go PC class dot name equals then what's returned and just to make sure that it's actually loading those values up we'll just use a debug statement and we'll just print it out PC class dot name 
So let's load it up and run it. AA is returned. Let's actually go ahead and create a character again. At least just for the name. I'll call mine PD. And he's going to have a really high constitution. Okay, create. And there we go, PD. So we know it's loading the data up properly. Go back to model development. We can get rid of the debug statement. And let's go into the next part. Loading of his attributes. In our next tutorial, we'll probably make our little in-game character sheet so we can print all the stuff out and actually look at the game sheet and see what uh, values he has. We'll probably have to add a few there that we haven't added already. I don't think we've added an experience or anything like that, but there's still quite a bit left to do, but that's okay. So iterating through our attributes. It's pretty simple. We can just get this here end part. We'll copy it and just paste it to the front. Now it's going to look a little bit different. We are going to want to get the primary attribute and we are going to assign it to the base value. We don't need that brace. Uh, so we're going to. Uh, so we'll go through and instead of setting the int, we'll get it. And the int we'll want to get is the attribute name cnt to string plus base value. And if the base value is not found, I'm going to assign a default value of zero. And we'll do the exact same thing for the next line. I'll just come in, copy this. Actually, I'm just going to cut it right out. Go to the start, paste that in, make it equal this. So we'll make sure we're getting the attribute. Then we're going to assign the value. And instead of setting it, we get it. Now the key we want to get will be the attribute name to string plus the little bit of text we appended to it and a default value of zero if it's not found. Now just to test to make sure this is loading up properly I'm going to copy this for next loop and I'm just going to do a debug on it. Now in Unity 3 it would be pretty easy just to use mono development and we could step through it. We could set breakpoints and step through and watch as values change but we can't do that in Unity 2.61 yet, so we're stuck with the debugging, or the debug.log. Okay, so for this, I just want to simply debug, if I spell it right. And what I want to do is just output the base value. And I'm going to append space colon space and then I'm going to put the experience to level so when it comes back none of them should be zero so we'll start it up uh, we don't have to be in the character generation scene anymore we can go right back to level one start it up well, as you see we got some debug stuff so let's stop it open up our debug console and look through one two three four five six seven so it loaded up all my attributes and the only one I had raised was my constitution and it's still 50 to raise because look like, like I said before that only changes once you start spending experience on it and during the character generation you get to raise it for free by using points so yeah that's all working let's go in so let's grab the vitals. We'll put it right above the for loop that we used for debugging. And it's pretty much the exact same thing. We'll take, see, 
If you notice before when we we're setting the int, this is the value we're passing in, and this is the key we're assigning it to. And what we're doing now is taking that place where we were storing the value before and assigning it to whatever is stored at that key. And if there's nothing stored at the key, we assign a zero. We'll cut that out. Make it equal to this. Uh, go through, make sure everything's okay. This is no longer a set int, but a get int. Base value, we'll make it zero. On to the next line. Cut it. I'm just going to add the zero now. Paste equals, and we want to get value. And now for the current value, cut, add a zero, paste it in, make it equal, and we're going to get a value. Now for getting the modifiers, we're going to actually have to parse that. We can't just take it and put it in because we need it in the form of a modified attribute. So I'm just going to comment that out for now. And we'll debug what we have already. It should be fine. And here we're going to get just the base value here. Then we'll grab the experience to level. And then I'm also going to add another space and a colon, just so we can also add the current value. OK, we'll save that off, go back to Unity, start it up, and take a look. So 40, 40, 0, 40, 0, 40, 0, 40. That doesn't seem right for health. I'm going to add one more here. And I'm just going to use the vital name to string. We already have that up there. I can just cut and paste that in. Well, we need one more parenthesis over here. Save it. There we go. So it's saying we have 40 health, 40 energy, and 40, well, it's 40 to raise, but it's saying we have zero for the value. So let me just check this. So we're going to get the vital, the vital name. We're assigning it to the base value. I'm going to open up the player press file and take a look. So we're in here, we're taking a look, and our energy current value should be 120. The current value of health should be 60. And the current value of mana should be 50. So we're going to go back to here. We're obviously not reading it right. 